Hello there. Today I will show you how to use pricing mode flow for contaminant transport uh, modeling. Problem uh, formulation given for us. A proposal has been submitted to local authority for the construction of landfill in area shown here. This one is a site, proposed landfill uh, site. The flow system is compromised of uh, one aquifer, which is 110 meters thick and can find sand aquifers. We said you look uh, conductivity this value, porosity this value, and uh, dispersivity this value. Regional uh, groundwater flow direction is from east to west. Going to set this one as east direction, this one as west direction. So groundwater flow from this to this. Inflow occur as area recharge which is 1.7, 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 8. In addition to this area flow, probably from precipitation, there is another uh, flow, lateral flow to the aquifer from this hilly uh, side. And that value is 1 times 10 to the power of minus 9. Outflow occurs as a discharge to the river, and uh, this river is gaining river, so water flow from aquifer to the river. River stage, river bed thickness, river bed hydraulic conductivity, weeds, and river uh, water depths are given uh, for us. This pumping well is uh, discharged at uh, a rate of 2.2 meter cube per second, and uh, this landfill is one kilometer by one uh, kilometer. And the leakage from uh, the field uh, would result in a recharge concentration of 1,000 milligram per meter cube. The landfill uh, developer claimed that the landfill is outside the capture zone of this uh, pumping well, and that any influent from the landfill will reach the river sufficiently diluted to meet regulatory standard. However, a local authority would like to investigate this uh, claim. So our today's activity are to determine whether the contaminant flow migrate to the river or to the pumping wheel using processing mode flow. And to know the concentration of contaminant that reach at river or at pumping wheel. It is start our activity. Open processing mod flow, file, create new model, navigate to the folder where you want to save your uh, model, the tutorial 3, save, then assign my uh, size. Here, the uh, number of layers is only one layer. You can look at uh, this problem formulation. We have only one aquifer, one anchor band aquifer with this uh, thickness. So, number of layers is one. Uh, model thickness is equal to the thickness of the aquifer, one, one, zero. The model top elevation is one, one, zero. Assuming that the model bottom is the data, so we will search model top elevation 110. Model extents given for us, model extents given for us, uh, you can look at here, you can look at uh, the figure here, the extent in uh, uh, this direction, extent in this direction is given for us, so using that extent, we can fill that excess value to here and uh, and more extent in y direction also this value another value that we have to assign here is number of row we have to assign number of row and number of uh, a column when we assign number of row and number of uh, column that means in another direction we have to now the number of cell in x direction and number of cell in y direction and uh, we have to consider the accuracy and the computational time while we assign the number of uh, grid cell. And the, for today's exercise, let us use cell with size 500 by 500 uh, meter. And when we divide this value for 500, we get 36 cell in 
pro direction and 36 sail in y direction accept the vertical exaggeration the default value okay then click here yes then let us assign layer property we have only one keeper which is unconfined keeper so assign it this one as an unconfined keeper okay then save status i bond mode flow uh considering the the data from uh, problem formulation all cell in the domain all cell in the domain all cell are what's active all cells are, are active so we have to accept the default value yes then another parameter we have to assign also top layer proper top layer and the bottom layer but in this case since we assume that the thickness of the aquifer is equal to the top layer elevation and uh, since we assume that the bottom of the aquifer is a datum we have to jump over this uh, activity for today's activity for today's exercise but when you use more than two layer or more than one layer you have to assign top layer and the bottom layer uh, for each layer let's go to parameter initial and prescribe how to locate uh for steady states flow uh, we commonly use the thickness of aquifer as uh, initial and uh, prescribed had decade so okay yes horizontal hydroconductivity is given for us look at here horizontal hydroconductivity is given for us so we have to assign that horizontal hydroconductivity value reset matrix 4.6 times 10 to the power of minus 4 then okay yes yes another parameter is what effective porosity so we have to assign effective porosity that given for us in the problem formulation you can look at here it is 0 0.1 that is effective porosity then okay then leave it later yes and uh, flow simulation uh, the, we have different flow package we have uh, different flow package in processing mode flow drain flow package vapor transpiration flow package general heat boundary horizontal flow barrier interpet storage recharge reservoir river stream flow time river variant specific head well and uh, waiting capacity among those uh, several uh, flow package in today's exercise we use only three flow package which are recharge river and well back because if you look at the problem formulation here we have pumping well so we we'll use well package here we have river which is not fully hydraulic contact with the aquifer so we we'll use river package and we have aerial recharge to all cell and uh, inter uh, flow to uh, the cell at East boundary, so we'll use recharge package. Let's start with recharge package. Recharge value reset matrix. The recharge value given for us is this one. This one is aerial recharge to all cell in the domain. So paste this value. Then okay. In addition to this aerial recharge, there is interflow to the cell in what is direction so the recharge to the uh, cell at its boundary are the sum of this value and this value which is 1.3 times 10 to the power of minus 8 so click here on the cell at right top right click here and change this value to three and okay uh, here we already give the value for one set but we have to duplicate to all cell at each boundary to do that click here on duplication pattern and I duplicate this value to all cell in the each boundary then save yes another flow package need to use is river package we have river 
at east bound, west boundary at the west boundary which is not fully had in the contact with the aquifer so we have to use that the river package click on the cell at left top corner and right click on that cell and we have to give hard the contact end of the river head in the river elevation of river bed bottom uh, how do the conductance of the river bed is not given for us in the problem formulation but we can calculate using this formula which is equal to how the conductivity times the length of cell times width of river over the thickness of sediments at the bottom of the river we have had the conductivity of uh, the river bed sediments this value uh, the cell Length is, is 500, the width of the river is 10, and uh, the thickness of the sediment is this value. So, when we compute this value, the height of conductance of the river will be 5.85. So, let us give that value. And the head in the river is given for us. Look at this. This one is head in the river, and the depth to the river our water is also given for us. So this one is equal to one one zero. And the elevation of river bed bottom can be computed from this value and the depth of water. One hundred ten minus ten is equal to one hundred. So let's make it one hundred. Then okay. Uh, this value is only given to the cell at uh, top left corner, but we have to duplicate to all cell at west boundary. And to, to duplicate to duplicate to all cell at west boundary, we have to click on here on the duplication button and duplicate to all cell at west boundary. Then Liter. Yes. Another flow package we need to use is wheel package. Click on wheel package and uh, go to the center of the keeper, center of the keeper, and uh, give the value to right click here and uh, use the discharge rate, which is. 2.2 times 10 raised to the 2.2 meter cube per second eh? 2.2 meter per second and in this case we have to use negative value because it is inflow it is inflow. we are what discharging water from the aquifer which is uh, outflow sorry this outflow not inflow so we have to use negative value outflow then okay leave this one yes now we already give uh, the data that can be used for uh, flow simulation so we can check our uh, progress by running the model let us run it yeah correct we can check also 2d visual as you know page uh, duplicate uh, distribution and duplicate distribution so seems good we are on uh, the right uh, track uh, let us change this uh, interval to two okay so we can see this one is hydrolicate distribution in the aquifer and uh, you can see influence of pumping well on hydrolicate distribution in the aquifer actually these nodes are main activity our main activity is to now whether the whether the, the the contaminant flow reach at the river or at pumping well and we have to uh, now the concentration of that uh, uh, leakage it does uh, that let us uh, go to our activity let's leave this one and uh, model will use mt3 dms or cwat for today's uh, our size set then click here new species is active and look at this one now we have constant density transport variable density transport Let's use constant density transport for today's activity then okay okay and then come to grid and uh, we have to also check transport 
cell status or transform transport models and if you click on each cell you can see this one and that means this active cell and uh, per our problem information we have no uh, cell which is inactive cell we have no constant head cell so let us accept the default value yes and uh, go back here here initial concentration we have to assign initial concentration of contaminants in the aquifer initial concentration of contaminants in the aquifer and know that data is given for us about initial concentration of contaminants in the aquifer so let us assume that the initial concentration is zero and if you click uh, on each cell the zero value is uh, you can observe the zero values that means the initial concentration of contaminants in each cell is zero so accept that zero value and cross this one and then see what Infection dispersion. Contaminant transport through aquifer in advection, dispersion, diffusion, and uh, uh, diffusion may be, uh, no, dispersion may be mechanical dispersion, hydrodynamic dispersion, and so on. Let's start with advection. Okay. Uh, model, then dispersion. Uh, dispersivity data is given for us, okay. Dispersivity data is given for us, which is long and dispersivity equal to 10. So let us give that value, value, reset matrix, 10, then okay, then yes. Another parameter is we have to assign seeing source concentration, and uh, we have different package about the transpiration constant heat general heat boundary recharge river stream uh, time variance in the way in this case we we'll use recharge click on recharge then it is and if you look at your problem formulation problem formulation the landfill is at this area and uh, the concentration of uh, the, the, the concentration of the contaminants that leak through from this landfill is also given for us the area is also given for us so we have to assign those uh, value to assign those value let's come to here right click and give 1000 1000 okay and uh, this cell is 500 by 500 uh, meter, but the proposed uh, landfill area is 1,000 by 1,000 1, by 1,000 meter or one kilometer by one kilometer. So we have to duplicate this value to other cell, this one, this one, and this one. It is one kilometer by one kilometer area. Then click here, yes. Then plus. And uh, let's come to parameter time. And uh, we have to assign the simulation period. We have to assign the simulation period. We, uh, we can say that we want to know the contaminants plume migration after one year, two year, 200 year, 500 year, and so on. Uh, let us look uh, for 2,200 uh, years. Let's look for 200 years. Copy. This uh, one is equal to 200 years. So let's copy this value to the period length, which is 200 years, or 6.311 times 10 to the power of 9 second then okay let's come to see what and uh, outputs control then outputs output time and this revert to the the time uh, where simulation starts zero time and this refer to the maximum time which is 200 year end of simulation 
and uh, this reverse uh, results uh, refer to the interval of the output interval of output we can uh, make it 10 year uh, interval one year interval 20 year interval 100 year interval for output is that make uh, 10 year interval for this one let's make it 10 year interval like this okay so we'll get uh, our 22 outputs and 22 outputs uh, simulation uh, of uh, the contaminant then okay okay then model then see what now we already input given data so we can run the quantum transports model can simulate it okay if the cell size is small, area is large, and the competition time is very large, it may take uh, several uh, time. But for uh, to this exercise, we use only small area, um, the cell size which is 500 by 500. So the competition time is also too short. Okay. Now we can see 2D visualization, 3D visualization, 3D visualization. And we can also export our results. We can export our results also. Let us see 2D visualization, 2D. Let us see contaminants transport 2D visualization, okay. And let us look at the indoor simulation, which is 200. And uh, come to here, environment, counter. Let us uh, uh, change this interval change this interval to five then okay and that is in the line contour this one like this it's better to use this one okay then okay then okay and you can look at uh, the contaminant uh, transport or plume migration plume migration the plume reach at What's the pumping well? It's not reach out uh, what's the, the, the river. So the claim from uh, landfill developer is not uh, correct. So we have to drop out construction of land defill at these sites, or we have to drop construction of pumping well at these sites. And uh, let us see the animation, and also we can uh, you can look at the concentration of contaminant that reach at pumping well. Like the concentration is what five. Huh? You can look at five, five milligram per meter cube of water, milligram per meter cube of water contaminant reach at pumping well, and uh, the water that pumping from this uh, 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 pumping well may not use for proposed or intended uh, purpose. Let us create some animation here. Animation. Let us change this uh, animation period to 0 0.5 second. Now we get to a place where uh, we need to save our animation. Animation. Then animate. Animate. Then okay. Then okay. Well, so you can uh, decorate using this option your uh, output counter. And uh, you can change also the minimum like this one and make this interval like this day. Okay. Uh, and uh, you can change label format also. You can make it fix it, label format. And okay, like this. And uh, you can see that okay, in such case, one dominant reach as, uh, as the pumping wheel, uh, contaminant which has pumping wheel at the end of the period at 200 years and uh, 
you can take or you can change this uh, simulation period and uh, see when and uh, where the contaminants uh, plume migrates. Thank you for your uh, time. If you uh, appreciate this uh, video, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thank you.